Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum. I hope everyone is doing fine. So today we are going to be talking about correlation analysis. In SPSS, there are a lot of statistical tools that allows you to explore relationships. One of them, we have the chi-squared test of independence. We also have the correlation such as the Pearson correlations test and its non-parametric counterpart such as the Spearman's rank, the Kendall style, the Fire and Kramer's and much more. We also have the ever famous regression analysis. So which correlation analysis should you choose? All right, so let's take a look at your scales. If you have a categorical scales, you have a nominal scale, then definitely you have to use chi-squared. Okay, and chi-squared enables you to answer questions such as, is there an association between race and degree majors? Which you can see race and degree majors are both categorical variable. If you have an ordinal scale, or if you have a non-normal data, then you will want to choose the Spearman's rank or the Kendall Sow. So they would answer questions such as, is there an association between English proficiency and CGPA? If you have the typical continuous variable, um, you would definitely would want to choose the Pearson correlation analysis. And the Pearson correlation analysis will answer questions such as, is there an association between service quality and customer satisfaction? Let's take a look at the service quality and customer satisfaction. You know, in social science, we typically measure service quality and customer satisfaction using Likert scale. And you know that we assume Likert scale to be interval scale. All right. So today we are going to be focusing on the chi-squared independence test or the chi-squared test of association. Well, I don't want you to get confused with the other form of chi-squared, which is the chi-squared goodness of fit test because we are looking into correlation and association. So remember that it's going to be chi-squared test of association. As with other statistical analysis, the chi-squared also have both null and alternative hypothesis. I'm just going to show you an example of um, a research question and the hypothesis that may follow for chi-squared. So in this example, we can see that um, the research question says it's the a relationship between gender and menu item choice. Okay, so you know gender is categorical. You also know menu item choice, whether you want to choose a sandwich or beef pie or even a cake. So that is also categorical. The null hypothesis would be there is no relationship between gender and menu item selection. And your alternative hypothesis would be there is a significant relationship between gender and menu item selection. Okay, say for example, if you want to write it in a different style, you can say that gender and menu item selection has a significant relationship or gender is highly correlated with menu item selection and whatnot. The other example you can see over here is that between income and hotel choice. So my null hypothesis would be there's no relationship between income and hotel choice or there's no association between income and hotel choice or income and hotel choice are not related at all. There is a significant association between income and hotel choice or I can reword it to be income and hotel choice are highly correlated. So chi-squared also has its own assumptions where your variables needs to be measured on a categorical scale. And your two variables should consist of two or more categorical independent groups. So for example, if you have um, gender as your variable, you would have one group of females and one group of males. So that's already two groups. And if you have ethnicity as your variable, you would have a group of Malay, you would have a group of Chinese, Indian, or even um, others. Um, so those are some of the examples that I have provided um, to explain the categorical independent groups. All right. So let's um, take a look at our example over here. Um, let's say that you think that attendance and passing an exam are related to one another. So this is probably based on your own observation. So your hypothesis would be there are no relationship between attendance and passing an exam. And this is what we want to test. The alternative hypothesis that is attendance and passing an exam is significantly correlated. So let's test that. Okay, so I have already uploaded the data. Um, on your Google Classroom. It's called the example chi-squared data. Um, you can pull it up. 
So I have the data with me over here. So as you can see, there's four variables in the data file, which is attendance, Facebook, exam, as well as frequency. But in this example, particularly, we are only focusing on attendance as well as exam because we want to see whether there's a relationship between attendance and exam. Right. So just go to analyze, go to descriptive statistics, and then you would want to click on cross tabs. Right. And then exam goes into rows and attendance goes into columns. Statistics, you would want to click on chi squared as well as cells. You would want percentages for columns. Click on OK. And then you can see the results over here. So you can see that those who were always attend, um, who are always present in class, they act eighty percent of those who are always present in class actually pass the exam, and only um, thirty five percent failed the exam. Um, for those who were always absent, sixty four percent of them actually failed the exam, and only twenty percent of them who got lucky and passed the exam. So let's take a look at our slides and interpret the results. So I've mentioned this earlier. You can see that. Um, as compared to 35.2% of those who were always absent, okay? We are comparing this and this one over here. There's a difference of 44.5%, which is quite a large sum of difference, okay? Because how do we get these differences? It's just this and this one over here, okay? Is it large enough for us to conclude that there is actually a difference between those who were always present and those who were in the population. So this is where we can use the chi-squared. As you can see, the Pearson chi-squared test over here, you would want to see the significance level. If it is significant, it tells you that there is a significant relationship between attendance in class and passing the exam. Alright, so this is how you report it. The value of the chi-squared is actually 50.248. The degrees of freedom is 1. The two-tailed significance value is less than point, is actually 0 0.001 which is less than 0 0.05 there is a significant relationship between class attendance and passing an exam so chi squared with a df of 1 equals to 50.248 with a p-value of less than 0 0.001 so simple right that's just how you report it so this is an exercise um, using the same data given, test if there's an association between Facebook usage in class and passing an exam. Okay, whether a person or a student are concentrating and whether they are not concentrating and playing on Facebook and whether they can pass the exam or not. So I want you to test it, you to run the chi squared. Make sure that you put the independent variable in the column and the dependent variable in the row. Okay, always remember this. The dependent variable goes into the row and the, the IV goes into the column. Be sure to ask for the correct percentage and the chi-squared. What are the research hypothesis and the null hypothesis? Don't forget about that. Do you reject the null hypothesis? How do you know? And what does that tell you about the research hypothesis? I'm going to see you in our next video. Thank you very much and don't forget to do this exercise.